Hello everyone, welcome to AptiPlus Academy for Civil Services. This is a video on daily news and editorial analysis, which I'll be covering from the Hindu and Indian Express. It's the most important news and editorial of the day that is relevant for both prelims and mains examination of civil services will be discussed in this session. Let's get started with the news topic list. Today is 29th of September, the first important news that is PFI ban and the working of UAPA tribunal. This is from the explain page of the Indian Express. Second, center appoints new chief of defense staff. We'll see and focus more about the functioning of the chief of defense staff. Third, budget to decriminalize some offenses under the GST and some rebate that is also allowed by the government. Fourth, Supreme Court to check curb on the freedom of speech of ministers. And the last is an editorial eye of this state. Apart from the news and editorial discussion, at the end of this video, there will be MCQ based question. These questions will be based on current affairs that will help you for the upcoming prelims examination. So without any further delay, let's get started. And before I begin the session, those of you who are new to our channel, do not forget to subscribe at Plus Academy for Civil Services on YouTube. If you like this video, if you find this video helpful, do press a like button. It's the first news that is PFI ban and the working of UAPA tribunal. Something important for general studies paper too that is the government policies and intervention for the development of various sectors and issues arising from a design and implementations. So recently the central government has banded the PFI that is the Popular Fund of India as an unlawful association and the temporary ban has been imposed in this organization for five years under the UAPA Act, that is Unlawful Activities for the Prevention Act. So a notification was issued by the Ministry of Home Affairs. They have categorically cited that the PFI has a connection with the terror organization and some of the prominent terror organization include SIMI, that is Student Islamic Movement of India. Bangladesh ki ek organization hai Jamaat ul Mujahideen and Islamic State of Iraq and Syria. So the PFI was found a connection with all this terror organization and they have been charged that they are actually promoting terror activities in our country. Further, the ministry has added that the organization was prejudicial to the integrity, sovereignty and security of our country. Now this ball has reached to the court of uh, basically UAPA ke jo tribunal hoti hai. Now they are going to decide that whether the ban will be extended for more than five years. Now this has to be decided by the court itself or the tribunal itself. The case will now be presented before a tribunal and that must confirm that the government notifications for a ban will continue or not. If continue, what is the number of years that PFI, that is a popular front of India, will be banned? Now looking into other important aspect of this news, you need to understand what is UAPA tribunal. So UAPA tribunal, ki agar baat kare, uh, this actually uh, provide a tribunal under the high court to be constituted by the government for its pants to have a long term legal sanctity. The second, it ordered to declare the organization as an unlawful and issued under the section three of the UAPA, right? Jo unlawful activities of prevention act hai, uske section three mein ye sare provisions hai. Now the provision says that no such notification shall have effect until the tribunal has made by order under section 4 confirming that the declaration has made therein for order in publishing of an official gazette. So according to the rule that is there under section 3 and section 4, the tribunal will take up the matter, decide upon the ban and the continuation of ban that is going to be there. Now the court has to decide, the tribunal has to decide upon the fate of the PFI. Now, according to section 4 of the UAPA, after the center declare an organization unlawful, its notification must reach to the tribunal within 30 days of the adjudication or not less than sufficient for the cause of move. So, the order will be 30 days, the notification is mandatory to publish. Karni, after which, the tribunal can call up the association by which writing show cause within 30 days should be uh, not be declared as unlawful, right? So, the tribunal ki pass options hai, that it has to come up with the night notice, so cause writing within 30 days, right? That why it should not be banded. So, this is a kind of a defense mechanism that is provided 
to the culprit or the accused one. Now, only when this is done, the tribunal hold an inquiry and decide the matter within six months. So the tribunal has been provided with a duration of six months to decide upon the fate of any cases arising out of it. Now, if we talk about the tribunal of the the constitutionals of the tribunal, the tribunal consists of one person, one individual, who is the high court ke judge. Hote. Mostly he is a high court judge. And if there is a vacancy, the other temporary absence or the tribunal can appoint a central government jo hai, kisi bhi ek judge ko appoint kar sakti hai, to have a proceedings at the stage when the vacancy is not filled. Now the center is to provide the tribunal such staff as necessary for the discharge of this function and all the expenses that is incurred by the tribunal are drawn by the consolidated fund of India. So this is a single most important point for the prelims examination. UPSC can directly ask you that the tribunal expenses are charged charge hai. So that is charged on the CFI, that is the Consolidated Fund of India. Now, power of tribunal ki baat kare, kis ki power di hai tribunal ko? The tribunal has the power to regulate its own procedures, including the place where it is holding a sitting. Second, does it can hold the hearing in different states for the allegation pertaining to those states? And it can make an inquiry tribunal at the same power vested in the civil court and the court of the civil procedures that is 1908. So what are the powers that the tribunal can exercise? It can summon a witness and examine on him or his oath. Productions of any document or other material object possible as evidence. Reception of evidence on affidavits. Requisiting any public record from any court of office, issuing any commissions for examination of witness and all proceedings of the tribunal are deemed to be a judicial proceeding. So, these are some powers that the tribunal exercise during the course of uh, disposable of the particular cases. Now, moving to the other news, Center appoints new chief of defense staff, important for general studies paper 3, that is security forces agencies and their mandate. So the government of India has recently appointed Lieutenant General Anil Chauhan as the next chief of defense staff. We are more concerned about the office of the chief of defense staff. I generally do not consider this type of news important for civil services mains or prelims examination, but the appointment is not our news. We are more concerned about the office of the chief of defense staff. In meanwhile, we'll see something detail about the general Anil Chauhan as well. So Chauhan, uh, where uh, he functions as a secretary to government of India, Department of Military Affairs. In a career spanning of 40 years, he has uh, several good command over the issues of Jammu and Kashmir, counter insurgency and the northeastern India. So the development come almost nine months after the loss of the chief of defense staff, General Bipin Rawat, who has tragically died in a chopper crash that took place in Tamil Nadu last year. Now, if we talk about service rule, mein jo changes ki hai, this is an important point for your examination purposes. In recent decision, in June basically, the government has amended the service rule of the Army, Navy and Air Force where it has allowed the retired service chief and the three-star rank officer eligible for consideration for the top military post. However, the age limit is there, that is 62 years of age on the last date of appointment or the retired chiefs were largely ruled out, especially for the present considerations. Now, Chief of Defense Staff, if we talk about this position, what is the The Chief of Defense Staff is a single point of contact between the government of India for giving the military advice and the senior most bureaucrat in the Defense Ministry which has a four major department, right? A CDS ki agar baat kare, they act as a permanent chair to the chief of staff committee and will also have the three services chief as a member. Now, he also had that the newly created department of military affairs is headed by him only. So the minister of defense mein jo nahi department of military affairs banai gai hai, uske head bhi chief of defense staff hote hai. This is a very important question for the prelims and even for the CAPF question, right? CAPF, which is examination, will be asked in this 
Now we'll have to perform the advisory role on the nuclear command authority that is NC. Now what is the significance of chief of defense staff? He will be tasked on taking forward for the reorganization of the armed forces into the integrated theater command as well as building consensus, synergy and efficiency among all the armed forces. Other news that is budget to decriminalize some offenses under GST. Something relevant for general studies paper 3 that is Indian economy and issues related to planning, mobilization of resources, growth and development. So according to the Ministry of Finance, the union budget 2023 and 24 will include some of the important steps that is the decriminalization of taxation laws, remove provisions in the income tax and goods and services tax and the custom laws. This is what the government has specifically mentioned beforehand. And the laws are similar to the sections that can evoke under the Indian Penal Code and reduce the prohibitive compounding charges under the GST. So, the compounding charge was given, there will exemptions by the central government. Now, the compounding provisions in the GST, which entails a penalty from 50 to 100%, 50% से लेकर के 150% तक पेनाल्टी चार्ज की जाती थी ना दिस विल बी एग्जेम्प्टेड एंड मेक इट पॉसिबल फॉर एनीबडी टू पे नो करेंटली द लॉ प्रोवाइड फॉर लॉन्चिंग अ प्रोसिक्यूशंस अगेंस्ट द ऑफेंडर इन केस ऑफ द गुड्स एंड सर्विसेज टैक्स जहां पे इवेजन या मिसयूज जो है टैक्स क्रेडिट की शुड नॉट बी मोर देन 5 करोड़ रुपीस सेक्शन 132 ऑफ द सी STA, that is the Central GST Act, will criminalize the legal credit of the GST evasions. The compounding charges of the offense under the GST will also be lowering the taxpayer and encourage the compounding their interest instead of going into the litigation. Now, looking into the penalty of compounding of the offenses, under the GST Act, the amount payable for the compounding of offenses shall be 50% of the amount that evoke the subject to the minimum of 10,000 rupees and a minimum amount of compounding is 150% of the tax that is 30,000 which is where is higher. The revenue department officials further said that there will be a robust growth in the tax collections both in the direct and indirect taxes and they have paved way to bring out more tax fair friendly reform to ensure that ease of doing business and decriminalizing the tax law will be there in the upcoming budget. Now moving to the other news that is Supreme Court to check curbs on the freedom of speech of minister. Something important for general studies paper too that is structure, organization and function of executive and judiciary. So the Supreme Court has decided to commence with a hearing where they important please ko wo hear karenge, where they will talk about limiting the right to freedom of speech and expressions for the public functionaries on the 15th November 2022. So this is basically with regards to the politicians, their statement that is made in the public, any news channel debate or any social media platform. So five bench ki judge banai gayi hai, jo comprise karegi important judges ko that will indicate the restrictions on the right to freedom of speech and expressions and the Article 191 of the Constitution 1950 is to be determined on the case to case basis. So this is an important reform directly coming from the Supreme Court. Act. Now pertinent questions of law ki baat ki gai hai. So the four pertinent questions are there. First, whether any restrictions can be imposed on the right to freedom of speech and expression under night, Article 19.1a, excluding the rest, restrictions that is enumerated in the Article 19.2. If yes, then to what extent? This is what the Supreme Court is going to examine. The second point of examination is whether the great restrictions on Article 19.1a can be imposed if a concerned person holding the office, if suppose an individual is holding an office, will he be liable for the restrictions? That is again a point of consideration. Third, whether the Article 21 can be enforced against individual or a private corporations not encompasses under the definition of state as a power or as per Article 12. And whether the state can proceeds again individual under the statutory provisions. So, ye kuch char aise baate hain jo Supreme Court uh, basically observe karegi and they will make their recommendation on this part. 
the court has decided to examine the question on 15th of November for this year. Now moving to the editorial of the day, that is the eye of the state, something important for Gender Studies paper 2, that is important aspects of governance, transparency, accountability and e-governance. So what is the theme of this editorial? This editorial talks about the surveillance power of the state. So I'll be looking into important aspect of this editorial by important subheads, that is the Telegraph Act, compliance cost and the privacy concern and the conclusion. So looking into the background, agar historically dekhe, in India, the surveillance has been the right of the states to deploy uh, intrusive measures against the citizen or the minimal check and balances. So this power starts the state. Ke paas rahi hai. By state, I mean either is the state government or the central government. Right? The colonial laws passed in the 19th century mein by the British that allow to monitor the communications and even to the postal and telegraph. India may telegraph act ko reform bhi kiya gaya. We'll see that also. Now, over the decade ago, allegations for surveillance was against uh, to the politician that led the CBI inquiry in the VP Singh government. This is a notable case. Now, the allegations revealed that the imaginary reasons were given in ordering the phone tapping without any authorizations. So, isi concern mein Supreme Court ne kuch important issues uh, basically handle karne ki koshish ki where they love they have last substantially given a legal reform on the surveillance law in India in this direction government has made some important changes where union government has recently published the draft communication bill to replace the telegraph act of 1985 so this is very important point for your prelims as well as for the mains examination that the telegraph law or the telegraph act of 1985 will be replaced with the telecommunication bill 2022. Telegraph Act ki agar baat kare, this act contain a broad and excessive power of interceptions and surveillance of the communications carried out through any telegraph, right? These are the colonial law which still exist in India. The surveillance power is principally a section under section 5.2 that has resulted in unaccountable, opaque, unconstitutional exercise of the surveillance against the political spectrum. Now, the same provision is being replicated today and almost to the word under the proposed clause of 24-2 that is under the Telecommunications Bill 2022. Compliance cost of privacy concerns ki agar baat kare, jose editorial mein highlight ki gai hai. So, there are two additional power that is there that will further raise the concern. The first, whether the central government under the clause 3 and 4 require the licensing of the telecommunication services. This is the first big question. And the second is the power to prescribe the standard under the clause 23, which may have regulations that certainly issues the computer emergency response system team that have resulted in the closure of the server or service by the local VPN. VPN basically use ki jati hai jahan pe aap network ko secure kar sakte hai, right? So whether that will be there as a portal or the turn bearers. Now this similar means that the smaller service provider like Signal will be unable to comply due to the compliances cost and the privacy concern and also leading less innovations on the privacy and the market contestations of the dominant firms. So they can have a lot of privacy concern for the companies operating in India either it is a uh, basically social media platform or kisi bhi tarah ke platform hai to kya compliances cost hoti hai aur privacy concern us company ke liye bhi kitni zyada hai this all things need to be taken into consideration now conclusions ki agar baat kare in a massive expansions of the legal sanctity or the legal sanctions surveillance of indian million of indian has been proposed time and again to access the mobile internet that has increased with the unprecedented method of the data collections agar pegasus ki baat kare you must be aware during the Pegasus issue, the same was reported. Now, this was being done on the data protections and uh, law with little transparency. If you have instances, ki agar example de, aap exam mein sakte, that the Ministry of Home Affairs refuses to disclose even the aggregated data on the number of surveillance order that was issued this year. And the second that it has reported cases in which illegal gathering of evidence is being sought to prosecute the people. So, kuch in sare aise baato hai jin pe hume dhyan dene ki zarurat hai. These instances will 
definitely be taken into consideration when the new law that is a draft law will be formulated because the ministry is taking its all cautions to ensure that they are making a law which is strong enough which is stringent enough to curb all the problems right so this is how a conclusion can be made moving to the mcq questions of the day before i proceed just to tell you the answers of yesterday questions for first question the correct option is c for second question also the correct option is c today's mcq for practice what electoral security dialogue ke bare mein aapko batana hai it's a strategic dialogue between india japan and australia it's call for free open and prosperous indo pacific very important questions this might be relevant for the prelims examination second is regarding the sambar lake this is a geography and contemporary questions the largest inland lake in the world and represent a depression in the aravli ranges so do check out for the correct options this was all about for the daily news and editorial analysis followed by the mcq questions if you have any other concern you can let me know i'll be more than happy to assist you for time being i'm signing off thank you so much for watching this video